For all my dedication to harvesting my own meat in the wild, in the back of my mind, there's always the security of knowing that my family's survival does not actually hinge on my success or failure in the field. In North America, those days are simply gone. But in the jungles of central Bolivia, hundreds of miles from the nearest city, the incentives to hunt and fish have not yet been corrupted by modern civilization. When you live out here, if you want to eat, you better be ready to kill. I'm Steven Ranella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. A few days ago, I set off on an adventure up the Casare River, a distant tributary of the Amazon located in the jungles of central Bolivia. With a crew of about a dozen guys from the indigenous Chimane tribe and two Bolivian guides, Patrick and Federico, from Angling Frontiers, we embarked from a Catholic mission that serves as a hub for the various Chimane settlements located up and down the river. It's a funny feeling to me to have people carrying my stuff around. Ostensibly on a quest to catch and release a fish called Golden Dorado in an amazing location that very few people will ever have a chance to see. Okay. I've made it my mission to take advantage of this rare opportunity yeah. and learn as much as I can about the hunting and fishing customs of the local people. I need to see his hand. I want to see his hand. In addition to learning about the weapons they use, I've also begun to see some of the food gathering practices they employ that differ significantly from our own, such as using a local plant as a poisoning agent to gather fish quickly and easily, something unheard of and in fact illegal in the US. I feel way out of my element here. After a grueling push through some really tough stretches, we arrived at our base camp and spent an amazing day fishing catching a Maturo catfish. That is so cool. As well as our targeted Dorado. Look at that thing. That's a gorgeous fish. Now, with the evening setting in, I'm gearing up to head into the jungle with two of the Chimane's most seasoned hunters. Here, they tend to hunt in the evening and at night. So they'll go out, you know, 5, 6 o'clock, and they'll hunt till midnight or 1 in the morning. In the US, we're so used to that you'd go out and you'd hunt for something. You know, we're gonna go hunt pheasant, we're gonna hunt deer, we're gonna hunt squirrel. They are hunting for edible stuff. And that could be armadillos, anteaters, monkeys, a whole variety of birds, deer, javelina. It's like if it's got meat, they like to eat it. So I was gonna kind of follow and just see what happens. I just can't wait to see how these guys do their thing. Marco is carrying a traditional Chimane bow, but Alberto is packing a Russian-made 16-gauge shotgun, which he acquired just a year ago. Along with flashlights, the gun is a rare but welcome bit of Western influence on their hunting methods. Me, I'm toting along a Hoyt compound that I really have no intention of actually using. It's just a prop intended to help make these guys take me seriously. What's funny is what's interesting and not interesting to these guys. Just like a dozen birds calling, not interesting. All manner of noises, not interesting. And then I just heard a noise that sounded like way off. That was real interesting. I have no idea what any of this stuff is. Now I've hunted dozens and dozens of animals of all different varieties. But what we come across not 15 minutes into our hunt is a real test of my resolve to experience this trip with a truly open mind.
place, how will your monkey? Como se dice en Chimani? Idi. 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 It's good? It's bueno? It's bueno. Like, I can't, I don't even know how to quite describe, but that is called meat hunting. I mean, they just shot and killed a primate for food. Which when people say like, well, what wouldn't you do? I'm always like, I would never mess with a primate. And it's just shocking to you to see it. And I feel weak for having it be shocking because it's so matter of fact to them. I'm, I sound like a blundering idiot right now. I'm just like, really, I've never seen a primate get shot before. <laughs> Coming here, I knew they liked to hunt monkeys, and I said, oh, "I won't eat it. I won't eat a monkey, but I'm gonna eat that monkey now. I don't want to eat the monkey, but I'm gonna eat the monkey." I don't know what I think about that. But then I also, I'm upset at myself for thinking that what I think has any significance about what they've just done, if that makes sense. I'm not easily startled, but it's startling for me to see a monkey get cooked. You just can't escape the uh, feeling that that critter is a little more closer to you than some other critters. Last night, I saw Alberto take his hunting knife and chop the end of the tail off, just like about that much tail, and kind of very discreetly bury it in a hole. Later, it was explained to me that you do that so that the next monkey you shoot doesn't get hung up in a tree by his tail. The animal might be unfamiliar, but the preparation process is universal. They've gutted it, saved several of the organs, including the intestines, for frying, and now Marco is removing the hair in order to cook it with the skin intact. I've seen it done plenty of times with other animals. I've done squirrels that way, and it's like kind of remarkable, man. And pigs, you know, very similar method for pigs. That's probably the only animal in the U.S. that is handled in that way would be pigs. Pigs. For like a whole pig for a pig roast. The diet on that monkey, you know, it's all nuts and fruits, you know, so it, it probably tastes pretty good. Oh, dude, thing. I'm having, I'm having some, man. There's no way. I'm not gonna go out and with someone and participate in the hunt and not eat something. Not eat something, that's right. Hair gone and joints popped. Marco ties it into a tight bundle, similar to trussing a chicken. Can you ask if, uh, if he was home and someone got a monkey, would it be a meal just for one's immediate family or would it generally be for the community? Cuando usted lo casa y lo lleva a la comunidad, ese mono es solamente para usted y su familia o para toda la comunidad? Sí, se parte. Se parte. Mm. So he says that uh, if uh, there, there's enough to go around, then definitely they would. It's something that they would share with the community. Is his favorite meat or is his favorite thing fish? If he had to pick a favorite. 
Si usted tuviera que decidir entre pescado, marimón o mono, ¿qué prefiere? Mono. They rather have a monkey yeah. before the fish. Before fish, yeah. yes. Finally, Marco makes a rack above the fire where the monkey will sit and smoke for about eight hours. The whole thing is somewhat similar to an American pig roast or Argentinian asado, and that familiarity helps diffuse the utterly surreal nature of this whole thing. It's not even a monkey anymore, man. Now it's meat. It lost its total monkeyness to me. Now I'm looking forward to it. I went from horror to hungry. It's early evening, and the red howler monkey my Chimane companions killed yesterday has been slowly roasting over the fire for about eight hours. Now, Marco and Alberto are preparing a broth, which they will put the monkey in to make a sort of stew. One thing I can tell you, and I mean this quite literally, is that the Chimane relish monkey way more than most Americans relish their own favorite foods. There is nothing in American life that elicits the excitement that this monkey has brought into camp. After chopping up the monkey, they add everything to the pot, bones, tail, even the head. Next, they take some green plantains, pulp the insides, mix that up with a little bit of the cooking liquid, and then add the whole thing back in. This will thicken the broth. They simmer the stew a bit to reduce the liquid, and soon it's ready to eat. What do you think? Yeah. It's rubbery, a little bit like it's el dente. Very chewy, yeah. Very chewy, smoky. Has the texture of uh, gizzards. There is no meat parallel to that that I know about, and I know about a lot of them. Sometimes when you eat something to sort of test your boundaries, you can't really tell if you like it or not. I ate domestic dog a bunch of times and could never like figure out if I liked it because it was just, it wasn't about what it tasted like, it was just about what the, you know, mentally where you were at. You know, it was about the act of eating rather than the taste of eating. I very quickly become comfortable with the whole thing and I begin to consider what it was that made me so unnerved in the first place. We are all products of our environment. We hunt and fish within a system of moral and legal parameters established by the culture that we are raised in. Our taboos exist because we have the luxury of choosing that our food will come to us one way and not another. But when we are placed in a foreign environment with a different set of rules and motivations, we're faced with a choice. Do we pass judgment on those with customs different from our own, or do we open ourselves up to seeing the world from a new perspective and embrace those differences? I still wouldn't hunt a monkey myself, unless I was really pressed for food. But this meal is actually quite good, and I am certainly glad to have experienced it. I can see why people like it, because there's nothing it tastes like. You know what I mean? It'd be like trying to explain what a marshmallow tastes like. There's just like not like a lot of parallels to it. <laughs> you know what it reminds me of a little bit more I think about it, is a uh, smoked turkey leg. I think if you were trying to pass it off as something to trick people into eating it, you would say it was smoked turkey leg. 
it's pretty good. Like if it had hooves and tasted like that, I'd be out there hunting them every night. It's about five o'clock now and the sun's getting down into the trees back here and some of the guys are gonna go into the jungle to hunt. There's a salt lick or a couple salt licks somewhere out there and they wanna go and sit those salt licks in the evening and then on into the night because sometimes animals will come down and visit those licks. But keep in mind, like I can't communicate with them. So once we leave here, all I can go by is like some hand signals, facial expressions, so I'm going into this blind. I don't really know what's gonna happen probably till the moment that it happens. The jungle is bewildering enough during the day, but it becomes a whole different place at night. I've hunted at night a fair bit over the years, but it was nothing like this. The unknown looms very large and it's so damn loud with life out here that it's deafening, almost frightening. He just made some kind of game call. I don't know what. It's like, I, I can't talk to him. It's just, it's just playing out in real time for me. Not only do I not know what to look for, I can't even ask what to look out for. So it's not a huge surprise that as soon as I let my guard down for a second, I'm reminded of the nastiness that exists out here. Ow. <laughs> Got bit by a bullet ant. Oh my god. Mm. All I knew about bullet ants before coming out here was that they're called that because they make you feel like you've been shot. I'm pretty sure they're not fatal, but they do make you feel like you want to die. Mm. I mean, it's like a bee sting, but god, it hurts. The entomologist Justin Schmidt described it as like walking over flaming charcoal with a three inch nail in your heel. It's getting puffy. His assessment does not mm. seem far off. So. As I try to walk it off a bit, the pain matures into a dull throbbing ache that seems very wrong. I have to stop again. Marco goes off into the darkness for a bit and returns with some sort of vine that he pulps with his knife and applies to the bite. It helps a little, but the uncertainness of how this is gonna play out brings me extremely close to panicking and wanting to pack it in. Oh my God, this thing hurts so bad, but it's not like doing anything weird, you know? It's just, it's not getting worse. It just gets different. Duele. No comprende. Duele. One of the many frustrations about not being able to talk with them is I know that it's bad, but I, know, I don't know what it means to get hit by a bullet ant. If it's just like to what degree of suckiness it is, and if there's a thing you do or don't do. Man, that song hurts. It's not until Alberto seems to ask me if I want to keep going that mm -hmm. I start to feel reassured. Vamos? If they're asking me, then it might not mean that something bad happens to you. If hunting more is an option, they must know that this is not the end for me. I can't imagine they'd want to carry my body any farther than necessary. Oh my God, that hurts, man, but I don't want to. It's like how many opportunities do you get to walk around the jungle with some indigenous hunters? You know? I feel like I should just kind of limp along and Hope this thing gets better. So we press on into the night. Slowly but surely, the pain begins to subside. Eventually, I can't even remember which foot it was that got hit.
I'm really glad I didn't quit because pretty soon the night's adventure takes a dramatic turn. This jungle is full of surprises.